ഹാപ്പി ഡേ ടു ഓൾ ദിസ് ഇസ് നിവേദിത്ത ഫൗണ്ടർ ഓഫ് ശ്രീ ആഹ്ന ഫിസിയോതെറപ്പി അക്കാഡമി ആ ടുഡേസ് ടോപ്പിക് ഇസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ബി അബൌട്ട് ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് മസിൽസ് ഇൻ ദിസ് ടോപ്പിക് വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു സി അബൌട്ട് ഹൗ ദീസ് മസിൽസ് ഡിറൈവ് ദയർ നെയിംസ് ബേസിക്കലി ദീസ് മസിൽസ് ഡിറൈവ് ദയർ നെയിംസ് എയ്ദർ ബൈ ദയർ ഷേപ്പ് ഓർ ദ ലൊക്കേഷൻ ദ ആർ പ്രസൻറ്റഡ് ഓർ ബൈ ദയർ നമ്പർ ഓഫ് ഹെഡ്സ് ഓർ ബൈ ദയർ ലൊക്കേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ദി ഫംഗ്ഷൻ സോ ലെറ്റ്സ് നൗ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് how the muscles are named based on their shapes for example when we take trapezius the muscle looks exactly in the shape of a trapezium so this muscle derives its name from the shape of trapezium the next muscle that we are going to look at is the deltoid deltoid is nothing but a triangular shaped muscle these muscle names are derived from their shapes and seeing the picture now it will be easy for you to remember the shape of the muscle and the location that they are present at the next muscle that we are going to see is the rhomboids exactly it resembles a rhomboidal shape so it is termed as rhomboids another example would be your serratus anterior serratus means saw tooth shaped so from the picture it is evident that the muscle looks exactly like a saw tooth so based on the number of heads these muscles are classified either as biceps biceps has two heads we all know and triceps a muscle with three heads so this is how it is classified the next classification is going to be based on the location so there are muscles like biceps femoris biceps femoris it means the muscle is located in the femur so it is named as biceps femoris The next one let us take an example of tibialis anterior it says the muscle is present on the anterior tibia so the location of the muscle as such is present with the name itself so it'll be easy for you to remember when you study a muscle's name with these kind of classification so the next classification is going to be a combination of both the function of the muscle and the location that they are present at for this i have taken the example of extensor digitorum longus so with the name we understand that the function of the muscle is extension extensor is extension and digitorum is nothing but your digits digitorum longus so from this we can understand that both the function and the location of the muscle are present within the name So the next example is going to be your flexor pollicis brevis. By the name we understand that the function of the muscle is going to produce flexion and the position is at your thumb. Pollicis is nothing but your thumb. There is one more classification where you can either put the muscles into a group or you can separately go into a muscle's action. So one thing is when you put them into group you commonly call them as flexors or extensors or rotators and when you put them into separate or isolated muscles you can call them as agonist antagonist or synergist so in the following videos to come you will know what an agonist is what an antagonist is and what synergists are so this is how muscles are basically named and i hope this video would have helped you to understand how these muscles derive their name and to remember them easily thank you